month ago, I marooned 16 ordinary Brits. Here we go. Aged from 18 to 66. Right, this way. On a remote cluster of Pacific Islands. Ah! Oh, what am I doing here? I split the groups to see what happens when two different generations... Check the guns out. ...are put to the test in a survival situation. To discover if the vigour of youth... ..could trump the wisdom of age. <laughs> Armed with just a few basic tools... We've got fire! ..in an environment filled with dangerous wildlife. <laughs> they were lashed by the worst tropical storms in a generation. This is impossible, bud. Questing an exit en masse. Tonight... <laughs> I discover how young and old really coped. I have not seen you once shopping wood! Muck. When pushed to the edge of existence... It was an absolute living hell. ..and left to fend for themselves in the wild. Oh, my God. Remember thinking, God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. ..and the secrets they use to stay alive. So I make a noose. <laughs> and, and I've got it round his neck! I said we did do it, Frank. Find out how island life affected them. I was in hospital for four days when I got back on a drip. And how it felt to finally leave. I'm I made it. I did it, I did it, I did it. It was just the best feeling I've ever had and I think I ever will have. One month after dropping 16 people on the island, I returned to see who was left and how they survived. This has been the most brutal conditions any of the island survivors have ever had to encounter. I mean, just, just a few minutes ago, we said the remains of a tropical storm over there. This will have taken its toll. The castaways were battered by Hurricane Otto and battled starvation. It's bad. Hi. Welcome, John. We're going home. <laughs> Only 12 made it to the end. Wow. He's here! Well done, you guys. <laughs> it's been a brutal, brutal season of the island. The worst weather we've ever seen. 21 days of torrential rain. Oh! oh it feels like I've been slapped every day. You know what? Straight off the bat, respect. Respect. Amazing. Really, genuinely. Thank you. Thank you. Respect. Thank you. OK, you're going to get you guys give us a little tour of the camp, show us around. I dropped the young and old groups on two separate islands, but they joined camps and lived together after the first week. So this is our new kind of camp, permanent camp. So has this taken shape over the last few weeks, or...? Yeah. The first couple of nights, I didn't sleep. I was so uncomfortable. So whose bed is this? Uh, this is uh, JT, um, Emma and I's bed. Yeah. Can I try it? Yeah. And then I remember when we got our beds, that was the first night I slept through the whole night. And would it keep you dry? And it kept us definitely dry and... And you're off the ground. Yeah, so it was nice having that security. OK, so what else are you showing me? I do have a construction background, an engineering background, and uh, in Oldham, which is the best town in the whole world. And this is something I made in two days. This is a really decent shelter. You've got good cover, you've got a bit of privacy, you've got that sea breeze. But when was, when was this finished? Oh, oh, about two weeks ago. By the end of their stay, the team had cracked the three camp essentials. Beds off the ground, shower-proof shelters and a roaring fire. To say, we kept the fire going for the whole 21 days that it rained, for the whole time the whole period time. That, we the that is the original fire, that is like... That yeah. has been... This, to me, looks like a well-prepared camp. You're ready, you're ready for the enemy here. It's amazing. It really is. But 35 days ago, it was a very different story. <laughs> I dropped them off as two groups, pitting the energy of youth... Here we go. I was so ready to like, grab the ball by the horns and go for it, and then you pull up to their mangroves and you're like, shit. ..against more experienced heads. OK, go, go, go. ..to discover if age made a difference to survival prospects. <laughs> you focus on, oh, how am I going to cope with the physical side of it. Yes. Oh, yes. But it's the mental side which was the hardest. The 18 to 30-year-olds managed to find a beach to camp on. Oh, yes. oh, 
But after the initial high, the harsh realities of survival kicked in. So fucking thirsty. They failed to light a fire for four whole days, so couldn't boil any water to make it safe to drink. Oh, my God. That's dark. We were getting to the point where we were dangerously dehydrated and could be causing, if we went any further, irreversible damage to our kidneys. We were going to have to call the whole thing off. Everyone struggles in different ways. Well, we completely screwed up. <laughs> I think it's just the whole hunger, thirst, sleep deprivation. It just makes you horrendously emotional. I'm worried I'm going to lose water if I cry. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> Go salt. back in. I really thought I was going to be a lot stronger and a lot more resolutely positive. Let it yeah, out. I think we could be okay. next week. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm going to cry. God, I lasted like a minute. <laughs>absolutely fantastic. By comparison, the older group made an incredible start. Within, like, the first day, we had pretty much conquered all the main things that everyone talks about, water, fire, uh, bed off the ground. By establishing their camp quickly, they had plenty of time to keep their spirits up. E, when I was young, bloody hell, times were different then. Yeah. You know, they talk about anal know. sex as well, like it's nothing. Like it's nothing. Yeah. What? It's... Only at Christmas if he's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one can like that, I'm sorry. You're lying if you say you do. What? <laughs> anal sex. Their greater life experience was backed up by a formidable work ethic. And 66 year old Frank had a particular point to prove. There's nobody stronger than me in our group, there's nobody could do more than me. So I didn't feel inferior, old, or anything like that. This gear. I need to do the fire first. Yeah! yeah! I wanted to build everything first. Here we have the frame, the framework for the accommodation. But he's a grafter, and you've you, you, you got to just respect that. It's funny, though, that the important jobs are the unglamorous jobs. You know, yeah. the chopper, yeah. chopping wood. <laughs> You know, it's physical, it's hard work, but without it, you're screwed. <laughs> I think it's what kept you going as well, didn't it, Frank? Yeah, the best way to pass time, work it to death, and that's exactly what I did. Your way to survive is to keep busy. Yes. <laughs> Once the groups met... So the people! Oh, my God! ..they decided to face a challenge together. You could see the youngsters, we'd rescued them. Frank did not rescue us, it's so frustrating. But he still maintains that now? He's a dickhead, isn't he? Do you think, therefore, if you bring older and younger people together, there's a sort of collective, you know, it's, it's stronger and better? I don't think age has come into this. It's down to the individual. Oh, I just think it's just everyone's just different and they all come together. It's a community. So you haven't seen a clear distinction with old, old and young? No. Five weeks in survival mode must have affected their memories because the generational gap was a constant source of conflict. You lot! You lot not older! Come on, craft! <laughs> the older ones thought that the younger ones were lazier. I feel I'm at fucking school. I don't think they were, I just think. Um, yeah, they were. They were bloody lazy. Can the young one come down here, please, and give us a lift for this timber? It's too fucking big for a pensioner. What was all the shouting about? And ask for a lift and nobody moves the fucking ass. I don't know why you're telling us to fuck off and about we're lazy little fucks. I had loads of hours with Frank, loads of hours. Because you ain't going to tell me what to do sort of thing. I know what I'm doing, I'm 30 years of eight, well, nearly 30. They haven't got that need, that urge. You know, yeah. they're mummy's little soldiers, mummy's yeah. little princesses. Oh, yeah. When you're younger, you start something and then something else takes your attention. Not anything malicious or horrible or anything like that. You just get bored. If I'm bored of something, I cannot stay interested and I can't keep doing it. But I wouldn't say it's just age, it was just coincidentally. <laughs> it was all the young people. Whilst the eldest islander, Frank, was one of the strongest, it was no surprise to many of the group 
though their youngest member was the first to throw in the towel. So losing Freddie, that was hard. I think he was looking for an excuse to go for quite a long yeah, time. Yeah, he wanted to go. I, I could see that Freddie was bewildered by the whole experience. And I, I said, you can be my apprentice. I, th I thought that'd be good for him. But then he just didn't have the, the wants, the eager wants to do what he was doing. Well, Fred, why aren't you chopping wood now, then? Because I've got a headache and I'm turning a bit of water. Oh, I'm you poor boy. I don't think that's embarrassing, so I'm honestly doing my best here. I mean, this is a massive challenge for me. I'm 18. He's a lovely boy, very polite, very well-mannered, lovely boy, but he's about 12. I've never been so tired in my life. Everything was, like, blurring. You know when you get all these, like, like, like little stars in your eyes? I just had that, and I was so out of it. I just remember sitting there and, like, falling asleep. After two and a half weeks, Freddie had reached breaking point. I have thought about everything, and I, honestly, I, want, I want to go, I think. Oh, it's a hard one with Freddie leaving because I just heard so many excuses. Hi, right, Frank. Take <laughs> hey, uh... yeah. That's it. Drag him on, that's it. I, mean, I was in hospital for four days when I got back on a drip. I don't... I don't know. I don't think I could have carried on personally. Five weeks ago, I dropped off the young and old groups on neighbouring islands with enough wildlife and vegetation to keep them all alive. If they had the ingenuity to find it, catch it and kill it. So what was your main source of food? Fish. Yeah. Fish, really. Fish, yeah. Yeah. Fish and yucca. Coconuts. Toasted now as well, just a little bit of a difference. Yeah, toasted coconut's good. Yeah. It's amazing how many different ways you can work out how to cook a yucca <laughs> and a coconut. What the fuck is that? Fucking turkey in our camp. Food was very thin on the ground, but when they pulled their respective talents... Thank spotted. Young and old made a formidable team. So I make a noose, a big pole, three metres long, with a bit of cord on the end, and make it on a slip knot. And I thought, if I can get that over its head or any part of its body, I've cracked it. I pull it down and I've got it round his neck. I said, we're dead, didn't we, Frank? <laughs> just cast it out. I just thought a new hermit crabs were the best bait. It looks like appetising to the fish. You can tell a fish, you think like a fish. Together, they caught a richer, more diverse diet than any islanders before them. We cooked in a little bit of sea salt as well, sea water. So it should have a nice bit of taste in it. We were grilling on the, uh, a liner off an old fridge, which is a piece of aluminium sheet, which we'd found on the beach and we'd scraped all the polyurethane off it, scrubbed it with sand, and then we were using that as a frying pan. When it came to food, it turned out that the islanders had contrasting appetites. Do you feel hungry all the time? I've never been hungry here, and that's what I... I'd love so, me and um, Jackie and Karen discuss. Well, that's because we're the oldest, we're all 50. I wasn't hungry. I'm never not hungry. I'm, like, the biggest gannet in the bloody world. I love food. You know, that was one amazing thing. We weren't hungry. Well, I weren't hungry. Well, maybe maybe there is an element of that. I don't know. How do you, how do you feel? I think there's, there's a few of us. <laughs> there's a few of us that, yeah, are hungry constantly. Energy is so low. And we all felt that. I felt that massively. Ben Cooper was on you like a like a, a rat of a drain pipe. You left something there. It was it your plate before you even seen it? Oh heaven! Me and Cags are a bit naughty all the time. When we were cooking food and stuff, we did kind of you know have a few pieces of yucca here and there. We had to sit down and eat our coconut oh, around here the corner. You go. That is the extremes. <laughs> this has got to. Mm, very cheeky, but we did laugh about that a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there was one opportunity for a proper feast. I might scream. Try not to scream. I'm trying very hard. I'm terrified. I need a nervous bone. Please don't scream. But first, they had to dispatch the island's most fearsome predator. So, talk me through the cave. It was the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. We're like. She was holding it to the left and I was holding it to the right and then Aaron came round and just literally pounced like Ray Mears onto this animal. Oh, oh. That's five pounds in the swear bowl. 
<laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. Bloody hell. Cayman. Now, that brought strangeness out in people. Hello, Don! <laughs> Don't be dreamy, son! Watching people with a Cayman tail but flattened out and, like, going... <laughs> like that, thinking... What are you doing? I was like fish and chicken in one. Yeah, yeah. And they were, ch they were children as if they were like cannibals, as if there was like this, there was no tomorrow. And I was like, God, really? Mm. I know, Jordan, you came on as a pescatarian. Do you see it differently? Like you're in this zone for this time, you can't survive like that, or how did you react? Yeah, I didn't enjoy any of it whatsoever. But I, you're foolish to turn away the calories that are put in front of you. It's difficult to get. By, like, week three in, I genuinely didn't really... Re mm, I did care, but I pushed those, those thoughts aside for survival purposes. Um, but I did feel guilty, yeah. You know what? Just have something to bite. Yeah. It just isn't a proper chew. I think the thing I really enjoyed after eating the caiman was feeling like my guts were coming back to life. I could hear sort of stomach rumblings and I burped. And those were things that I hadn't realised had stopped happening until they started happening again. Exotic foods and a different climate played havoc with people's digestion and no islander was spared. If we have a big meal and I don't shit the next day, I'm going up there with a few fingers. Oh! Really? I'm pretty sure that there's a clog up there, and I need to declog. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Is there any volunteers, Ben's asking? Like, every day, you would ask how people's uh, bowel movements were. <laughs> How's yours, Jagger? Still? Um, any movement? No movement. Yeah, how are you feeling today? Yep, great. Got the shits today? Yep, have you? Yep. I'm on my four. Yeah. My fourth spout of some serious diarrhea. I've just shit myself. You just shit yourself? Yeah. I've farted. Oh, and um, it's, um, we've been eating coconuts today because we had nothing oh, to eat. Mate. And it's all fucking emptied, so. Uh... I think everyone shit themselves. Everyone did. Uh, yeah, and I did. I didn't want to admit that on camera, but. Um... I didn't poo for like 19 days initially. So then when that came, Bloody hell. All hell broke loose. Last night, I had to go in the sea in the pissing rain to have a diarrhoea. These fish that bite you oh, no. are all around me. And I'm splashing up. <laughs> they were trying to eat me diarrhoea. <laughs> <laughs> but half of me thought, oh, we could eat them. <laughs> Come on! The problem with Karen is that the two pair of knickers that I was allowed to take on that island, I'd get up in the morning hoping to put a clean pair on to find that she'd pooed herself of the night and pinched my knickers off the washing line. And she thought it was funny. Full of shit. That's what my husband says I am. <laughs> and I was on the island. The island had many hidden threats, from dangerous predators and poisonous vegetation to vicious riptides. Mike! He's, he's going. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God! Oh, my God. Frank! Oh, Frank got uh, washed away, the old sailor, which is a bit ironic. Right, mate. Right. Yeah, job's good. But as in many survival situations, their biggest enemy <laughs> was themselves. Uh... It fucking, I'm holding it on. I think the main problem was people could have done dangerous things because they weren't thinking. Don't worry, just take deep breath. And they just weren't expecting it to be as draining as it was. One, two, three, seven. <laughs> oh, you! Imagine that you're wearing a suit made of lead. Aaron. I think that's how it feels to do things when you're that tired and hungry. Shit, 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 shit. You OK? Oh, fuck. I fell asleep. That was all. Looking after each other is fundamental to survival. But on this island, the group turned on one of their own. This is the first time that as a group you've collectively voted somebody or asked them to leave the island. 
How did you feel about that, Jane? I know you were kind of instrumental there. Um, from first meeting them, I knew there was something a little bit quirky about them. Phil took a bit of a control, and it was a control that I didn't particularly like. There you go. A power control, not a control that I'm going to look after you. Okay, please, just let it. I'll stop your places for two minutes so I can get warm. Yeah, I understand that. But if I don't, if I don't maintain this power, then what? Can you put some boots on and put some socks on? Yeah, it is. Never felt as alone in my whole entire life. All I wanted to do was just lie next to the fire. I hear the arrogance of the man. You know, that's not sharing. That's not. That's that's being selfish. Last night, some of you were showing the first signs of hypothermia. When I asked you, could I be beside the fire for five minutes, you said no. Beside no the fire. comment, because I'm not going to discuss anything with you. Well, yeah, tell fire. you what, then. You're a liar, okay. right? Because you know you fucking did. Jane was capable of blowing things out of absolute proportion. Those tiny incidences were amplified, I regard, disproportionately. Everything went out of control. I probably never sworn as much in my life. And if I, if I could have physically assaulted them that night and getting away with it, I would have punched them all over that camp. Jane wasn't the only one to turn their back on Phil. His use of some scavenged olive oil didn't go down well with many of the group. It's really quite depressing, actually, to see that. Isn't it? It really, depressing. really is. Fucking yeah. annoying. Without that, we would have no food. Without the fire, we'd have the no fire, water or the food. The fire was lit. But how can seven people be wrong and one right? Yeah. I don't get that. I made appropriate judgment calls at the time. Some, in hindsight, were better than others. But I stick by them. Phil, I've had a problem with you from the start. I don't think that you belong in this sort of social situation. I'm asking for the members of this group here to vote whether you stay or whether you go. It was scary. I can honestly say it, it was a scary feeling to be singled out like that. I think you're a male chauvinist, ignorant pig, and I think you are a disgrace to mankind. Shit. There was frustration in the camp, and they needed a scapegoat. The Lord of the Flies element comes in if you know, if you're not voting somebody off, but you're shunning them, and then they don't get food, and then eventually the, 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 the real consequence is, is can somebody can die. If it was actually all the flies, he definitely would have been killed 100%. He would have definitely been killed. Does that feel fair, or, or what about the word, what about right? Yeah, it's not fair. It's not fair on him. It's not fair on the rest of the group. But as you say, right, yeah, I'd say a right decision. Enjoy the rest! You know, once we got shut through him, it was like having a great big shit. Oh, what a relief. But for Phil, the drama continued back on the mainland. I'm in a Panamanian hospital, having had major surgery on my fingertip, which I just thought was a little bit of a cop, and it wasn't. Ah! And they've cut away necrotic, you know, dead flesh. So it was black. It was going gangrenous. It was stinky. Ah. Glad I come off when I did, because otherwise I might have lost my finger. Because the surgeon said that 24 hours later, I might have lost it. So ironically, in hindsight, it might have been a good thing. Pull your knickers down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be silly. Touch my wheelie. Knees up, mother brand. <laughs> so when you put old and young boys and girls together, you think, you know, there's bound to be some romance. But was that? Oh, can, I, can I say, can I answer this one? I'm 29, I'm a red-blooded man, yeah? High sex drive, whatever you want to say. For 35 days, I have not thought about one thing on this earth to do with sex, to do with a girl, to do with anything. There ain't been a tingle in this dingle the whole time I've been here, I'm telling you. <laughs> Your mind goes to survival, thinking about what you're going to eat next and thinking how you're going to get on, honestly. Are you saying we're not you attractive? Just... I was going to say, yeah, the, the girls are going to be very upset, Ben. 
I thought being boy, I thought, right, well, I was going to my friends, yeah, I'm going to be the first one to sort of crack on with a girl on there and all that, being my usual boisterous self. Then you don't eat for four days. See you later. Libido gone. I can't believe I ain't had a wank in five days. It's going to be six days tomorrow. That's a Bad. long time, yeah. That's a long, long time. I don't go five minutes. I swear to God. Four, five, six a day. What? Easy. <laughs> I think it would be weird if a guy didn't wank. Yeah. Like, that's a normal thing to do. Love it. But Love not it. five times a day. Not five times that's a day. That's only when I'm ill. <laughs> Romance might have been a non starter, but a bit of flirty banter was key to keeping spirits up in the camp. Girls, yeah. what do you reckon of my erection? I've always, erection? I've always loved your erection. I think your erection can get bigger than that, Frank. I think we'll well, not nowadays. Jane. Jackie and Karen are really good fun. You know, they are really, really good fun. Lady Bouquet. Yes, my dear. It's good to hear you having an input into this conversation. I can't get a bleeding word in anyways. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've ever actually had a lady friend, as it were, you know. So that, that, was, that was special. Can I say you're looking more handsome every single day? Well, thank now, you very much. Don't come back without a turkey or a snake. How about the purple-headed bed snake? <laughs> oh. oh! If you had to say three key elements of a survivor... Humour. Humour. And yeah. hard work. Resilience. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you know, what I love is it's exactly the commando qualities. If you think of that positivity, determination, cheerfulness and adversity is what you're saying, humour. Yeah, we found that as well. Yeah. Jay's sense of humour at the very beginning was... Amazing, like God's honest truth, she just had me in stitches, and without laughter, you'll cry. So she kept me going. Jade, you look forward to tonight, girl. Yeah, have a bit of coconut. <laughs> all be sold with a bit of coconut, eh? Oh. <laughs> she laughs all the time, but she demands a lot. Hey! Big thing for us in the younger group was surprisingly singing. When you call my name, it's like a little prayer down on my knees. We're louder than you to take you there. It was the middle of the night, and we were all so happy. Oh my god, I got goosebumps. <laughs> I can feel you now. Just call my breath. You know I'll take you there. There was a lot of singing on that island. None of us could sing for toffee though. Just come up with you know a day you do. Oh. But even singing songs struggled to raise morale when the islanders were pushed to the limit by the worst local weather for 22 years. There'll be beaches, they said. It'll be fun, they Take said. Bikini, they said. Nah. nah. The first pit of patter on the palms. It, please stop, please don't go into a big stall. And then five minutes later, bang, heaven's open. I've had better times at a funeral, I'm telling you. <laughs> the tropical rain wasn't just unpleasant, it caused flash floods that could have swept the camp away. So, what did you do? Once we knew we was in trouble, everyone sort of got together and tried to dig ourselves out of it. Mother of God! Did the trenches not work? They do work, but it's just the volume. I've sailed my yacht within 970 miles of the North Pole. I've sailed all the way around Cape Horn. I've climbed Kilimanjaro. There's nothing as difficult as what I've done on this island. The conditions were atrocious. After 20 days on the island, Hurricane Otto hit Panama causing devastation across the region. Hello, Zero. Hello, Zero. This is Bravo. The group um, are requesting an exit from the island on mass. Over. But tell me about the night when you had that... You obviously had to make that emergency call. We've had such a sustained period of downpour, and then we just... We thought we was at the end of it, and we experienced the 24 hours of, of by far the worst. If it doesn't come across, 
on screen to how bad it was, I will cry and cry and cry because I swear to God, it was an absolute living hell. I'm not doing another day. I'm not doing another day. Jane crying in my back for hours, she seemed to cry for, uh, which was heartbreaking. It wasn't my front and Karen. I wouldn't just look and walk and see how they can talk to you. Remember thinking, God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die here of hypothermia. How can I die here of the cold? Why not then just move, just t take the fire, take the shelter, move? I think there was a fear. I don't look at that situation and think, oh, you know, we could have moved. I, I look at that situation and think, oh, my God, we were in the middle of a nightmare. It was horrific. I think that's a, that's a fair and honest assessment. You, you were, like, overrun by the enemy, really. Yeah. So, you know. When the worst of the hurricane had passed, my safety team finally made it ashore to assess the situation. To keep this fire going in the conditions that you've experienced is unbelievable. The minute you're in a trough, that trough will change to pig. Trust me, it will. We burned it, Andy, mate. We burned it. I defeated the group. We just broke. We broke. And that was it. I was off. Whilst the majority wanted to leave, some islanders were determined to carry on, whatever the weather threw at them. Explain to me why you're staying. I have to, right at the bottom of my heart, know that I can't do any more here. Thought, you're a bunch of masochistic idiots that really... What are you going to achieve by stopping here? Aaron yesterday was tired. The day before he was tired, the day before that he was tired. Yeah. He had nothing left. But all of a sudden now he's got fucking strength for like 10 men, he wants to carry on. That's... yeah. Couldn't get any wetter, I couldn't get any colder. I think it was the most willpower I've ever used. Kagi and Aaron said they were staying, and I don't know why they said they were staying. They wouldn't be able to survive in a fucking supermarket if they got locked in. What we want to do is move air location to here. My safety team decided that no one could remain unless the camp was moved to higher oh. ground. Every single islander then followed Aaron's lead and committed to stay. To be truthful, honest, I'm, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself for wanting to leave. Got some energy. Oh my God! <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Please, someone stop me. <laughs> I promised myself that I would not give in, and also Mum and Dad were like, "You better not leave. <laughs> That'd be so embarrassing." <laughs> you know, nobody expected you to be great survivalists. You know, you've become it. You don't know it yet, but you've become it. At the end of the day, you know. With all the survival skills in the world, when you're in the hurt logs of a hurricane, there's only one thing that gets you through each other and, and, and a bit of grit. So I think, as I said, what you've done is incredible. One of the key traits in a successful survivor is resourcefulness. And the islanders made good use of whatever they could lay their hands on. Um, Bear, I've got you a wow. present. Wow. Please wow, that don't really... be too excited. I am excited. Um, it's a sparkly bee for, for Bear and it's a necklace. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Oh. You know what? I'll wear that with pride. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's amazing what washes up on those beaches. Cags, I've bought you a present here, look. Oh my god, I don't know where that's been. Get it away from me. It's a bit lightweight for a proper dildo. I take Doc Emma's word on it. I think it did get used for uh, digging trenches. It's got just the right shape for a gully. <laughs> so much shit. I imagine if you found two empty cans of Coke or something. Oh, God. The beach is your supermarket. We all know that. We've worked that out. Flip-flops everywhere. <laughs> Ooh, and what's he wearing on his feet? A fucking flip-flop! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's actually quite shameful. You know, it makes you realise what we're actually doing to the planet. Despite living off what other people threw away... <coughs> Shut up! The islanders embraced much of their remote, simpler existence. I enjoyed sleeping under the trees, I enjoyed listening, I enjoyed watching the fireflies. There was magical times as well. On the island, there's no noise. The only noise is waves. <laughs> the trees. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Oh, my God! Oh, wow! Oh, my God! Turtle nest! 
someone pointed out, oh, there's the eggs, and they was going to go. They was getting washed away. There was no doubt about it. Saving the turtles, man. Oh, they're so soft. But just keep them up the right way, Jack, yeah? To dig a new little nest of further away from the beach where they would survive, to carefully, me and Jackie, my mum and dad, pick every egg up singly, one by one. That was one of my favourite experiences. Exactly 40. Wow. That's all of them. Who the fuck gets to do this? I've just saved the fucking turtle's nest. I hope they did survive. Turtles are endangered, aren't they? Are they? They are, aren't they? Yeah. Turtles are endangered. Yeah, I knew that. The group might have learned to love their surroundings, but in the final two days, they were rocked when two of their most popular members <laughs> were forced to leave the island. <laughs> Karen was taken off under doctor's orders after not being able to eat during a prolonged bout of sickness. How are you this morning? I can't stop lecturing and I mean, I'm shit in bed. Like... I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm taking you off. I'm, I'm sorry. I had a nightmare with the food situation. So if I don't eat anything, then there's nothing to come out. But apparently it doesn't work that way. Love you to pieces. All right. You do. Yeah. <laughs> it broke my heart to see her leaving such so late in the in the game because she deserved to see her out to the end. Then on the penultimate day, Jagger left the island because of a family bereavement. This morning has got to be the worst morning of this entire entire experience. So Jagger obviously has had to leave, and our hearts go out to him. Been an incredible yeah, part of it all. It's odd, man. The only way we got through was going. What would Jagger want right now? He'd want us to carry on, and that's the only way we did it. You grow a bond because you're with each other. You wake up with each other morning, noon, and night, and you do everything with each other. And that's how me and Jagger was. And it was it was hard. It was hard. <laughs> After 35 days on the island. Last thing, what do you want to do? Put out the fire? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Claire. I return to take the castaways back to civilization. Let's get the fuck out of here! Oh, yeah! I'm just couldn't stop crying. I was sat in between, I think, JT and M. I was just crying. My island! Oh! Honestly, it's all you dream of. I dreamt of that moment for, you know, for a good month. It was just the best feeling I've ever had, and I think I ever will have. We did it. 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 It was a huge relief. A relief for sadness, because you sort of like been a, as you've been your home for five weeks, they've been your, your family for five weeks. It was done. You're never going to do that again. Final respect to you guys. Thank really you guys. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Once on the mainland, they had the perfect welcoming party. As Karen was back on her feet, after two days of medical supervision. When I see these shores, you see us hugging and kissing and crying when somebody goes, I think, well, that's all the crap, that, you know. But it's not. And I'm, I'm the biggest, strongest, hardest bloke you get when it comes to that, you know. And I, I, I was really upset when she went. Did you catch that bloody alligator? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you're still part and of the group. Oh, yeah. There's a the teeth from it. Oh. <laughs> The islanders had survived on less than 300 calories a day, so I made sure they acclimatised slowly back to a normal diet. Oh, my gosh! It's food, food, food! Sweet, this is great. It was just the taste in your mouth. We have not had any flavour in 35 days. This is like an explosion. Each mouthful is orgasmic. It's incredible. It's fucking amazing, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> The islanders' experience didn't just starve their taste buds. Their whole bodies went through a massive transformation. Fucking hell! Oh. Shit! 
That's three stone. I've never been this thin in all my adult life. Wow! I think the island did me really well. I seem to have come back definitely a lot healthier. Yeah, I look all right, mate! <laughs> Yes, that in the gym, in the gym. <laughs> oh, my God. When I think about all the times on the island when I just, like, when we had no food, no water. Oh, my God. You know, you had to think about everything so carefully. Oh, my God. But here, you, you know, you've got money, you've got food everywhere, and you can just have whatever you want and how much of it. And um, I think everyone takes it massively for granted. <sighs> So nice. Oh, look, look what I can do. Look at that. Look, look. I don't have to go to a stream and boil the stuff. It's just there. Even now, to this day, turning a tap on in my house and having running water coming out of it, I just look at it as a little miracle. I've got my toothbrush and I've got my toothpaste and I'm going to brush my teeth for the first time in 35 days. Oh my God. Oh my God, toothbrush and toothpaste. We had toothbrushes out there that washed up that we just boiled. Cheers. Cheers. You never had toothpaste. I'm scared. Oh, toothbrush stinks of fish. Fish, fish, fish. Fish, fish. Kyle. Oh. Yeah! Oh. Normally, when me and my husband sleep together, I'm on that side and he's on that side, and I tend to sleep like this. Like that. But since I've been on the island, I'm wondering whether I might need somebody to like, you know, a few tooties. Like that. Like that. And then we'll have one like that. And one like that. And I'll be like, that! Back together like sardines in a tin can. Spooning saved our lives, and that's not even an exaggeration. Emma's being spooned by Richie. <laughs> Richie's being spooned by Ben. <laughs> Ben's being spooned by Ben. <laughs> Ben's being spooned by Emma. <laughs> Emma's being spooned by JT. <laughs> and JT's being spooned by Cags. Woo! That, my friend, is a spoon fest. <laughs> oh, my God, this is beautiful. I've got sand and where sand be. My hair drove me mad. It felt like uh, I'd had a Lego head put on the hair. It was that hard, my hair, and that thick. Jack Nicholson here. Yes, <laughs> Johnny! With just sand and dirt and salt, and I hate that feeling. It felt like things were dripping out of my hair and it was horrible. I can smell all my pheromones and all my toxins. <laughs> Thanks, Steph! Woo-hoo-hoo! Sweaty patch. <laughs> it was gross, but I did enjoy it, because I am just disgusting anyway. Oh, I just need to... Jesus. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> the islanders had no contact with their loved ones for 35 days. Phil? Yes? It's me! Oh, please <laughs> help! Hi, Mum. <laughs> I knew I was going to start crying. <laughs> just could not stop crying. It's just, it's, you're just so horrendously emotional. Oh, my God. I feel <laughs> so good. I'm so happy. I'm, I'm so proud of you. I've missed you so much. I absolutely adore you and I love you. I mean, you know, I wish I'd give you a big kiss. I'm going to go home and I'm going to make sure my boyfriend knows that I love him. I'm going to just not take the people that I love for granted. I love you, son. I love you, son. I love you, son. I love you, son. See you later, guys. Well done. Thank you. Good Great job. Proud of you all. Yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy your birthday. I thought the whole purpose of life was just working nine to five in an office, making money, have kids, die. <laughs> And the whole thing has just made me realise, like, no, that's not what it's about. Thank you. Yeah. It's so nice not having your phone. It is so nice being away from, like, the news. Stretch. There's no money. There's no such thing as, like, buying the latest pair of shoes. It's like jungle chic. <laughs> that's all you've got to worry about. <laughs> hey! Hey! Yeah.
Thank you very much. Yeah, to be able to go and tell my grandkids or my children about this achievement, about what I've done, it's, it's a good feeling, you know? It is a good feeling. All yours, of course, all yours. <laughs> Watching a firefly, like, dart, like a little light, and you, I'd follow it. And the star that I'd watch is to track over my head. They're, they're mining there, they're mining here now. They're not making it. No, well, it was there. It was the best thing I ever did for me, for my mental um, strength. I love chicken nuggets! <laughs> <laughs> Surround yourself with good people um, and you'll have a good life. Hey, give us a hug, you big man. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back now on, on the island, my experience is the worst experience I've ever had. I'm coming off the island. I'm not doing this. I am off. Would I do it again? Everything's an effort today. I'd definitely do it again. But don't tell my wife.